There's an old saying that says, seeing is believing. I'm Jeff Dixon. I'm the host of the Elvis Conspiracy, where we're looking at the life and the death and the life of Elvis Aaron Presley, who, uh, by most reports, and according to most people, died. He died in August of 1977. But there are those who believe that Elvis never left the building. As a matter of fact, many believe that he faked his own death for a variety of reasons. And this is a series where we are looking at some of those ideas, some of those thoughts, and the conspiracies surrounding the life and the death and life, maybe again, of Elvis Presley. Are you a believer? Do you think that Elvis is still alive? Or do you think he actually did die on that day? And then why do you believe that? People have all sorts of theories, and yet there's a lot of evidence out there that at least causes you to pause and go, boy, there was something different about that day. Uh, it was either one of the most poorly handled deaths and the aftermath of death in most celebrities' history, or there really is something going on. And we're looking at it, and we're trying to head toward a conclusion where we're going to suggest a theory that has not been suggested by anyone as of yet. We're going to give you the reasons for why we think that theory might actually be a possibility to add to the mix. And then we're going to make some spiritual points about the life and the death of Elvis Presley and whether or not he's alive again. But today we focus on a famous photo. It's called the pool photo. Um, it is one of the pictures that is supposedly taken of Elvis Presley after his death. The picture um, was taken by a man by the name of Mike Joseph. And the picture is known as the celebrated pool house picture. It was shown on a news segment of KCOP television out of Los Angeles, January 8th of 1986. Tim Malloy, the co-anchor of the program, introduced the voice of Bob Walsh, one of their reporters, who told how Joseph got the picture. I quote, Mike Joseph took his family to Graceland for vacation on January 1st of 1978, more than four months after the death of Elvis Presley. Now understand, at that point, Graceland is not the Graceland um, that we know it today. Um, it was just different. It wasn't set up for tourists. It was just open to the public. And Elvis has recently passed away. Back to the story. At the time, the grounds of Graceland were only a part of the estate that was open to the public. But Joseph took some snapshots and put them away for safekeeping. Four years later, while reading about Presley, Joseph took out his mementos of his Graceland visit, and he noticed something unusual in the shot of the bathhouse behind the mansion. It was a shadow, I guess best could be called, and the lower half of the door. Joseph reported that he had the pictures enlarged, and the results were nothing short of startling. Someone or something bearing a remarkable resemblance to Elvis Presley was indeed sitting behind the door. The sequence of pictures, including shots of Elvis's grave, confirms that the pictures were taken after Elvis's death. And Joseph says he's not trying to convince anyone that Elvis still lives or that it's a snapshot uh, of some supernatural phenomenon. He's just simply saying that there's something there. How it got there? Ah, that is the mystery. And that is the famous pool house photo. And so the shot is taken across from the grave of Elvis Presley, across the swimming pool to the pool house. At the time, the pool house had a glass door. And in the bottom of the door, the image that you're going to see on the screen now as we're talking, uh, shows up on the film. Mr. Joseph, and again, this is four years later, um, begins to looking at this and begins showing this picture around. And according to his own thinking, he actually caught a picture of Elvis Presley sitting in the pool house, looking out over his own grave at people who were walking past paying tribute to him. What did he do in the aftermath? Well, to prove his point, I guess, he sent the original negatives of the film to Kodak to prove that they had not been tampered with. On the screen, you now see a letter from Kodak 
that confirms that the negatives of the pictures that Mr. Joseph provided have not been tampered with, and that the image that is there has not been superimposed. It really is there. There is a, an image in the lower part of that pool house door. Time went by. Mr. Joseph continued to share the story of this pool house photo. Upon hearing about it, if you were to go to Graceland today, you would notice something uh, maybe surprising about the door. Um, the door is now a solid door. There's no longer a window in the door. Shortly after the news of this photo was released, that door was swapped out and a solid door was put there so you couldn't see inside anymore. But in 1988, Joseph changed his mind. He changed his claim. He said that he really didn't have a picture of Elvis. He didn't know who it was, but he knew for sure it wasn't Elvis. The reason that he knew it wasn't Elvis? Well, he had talked to a couple of men who worked with Elvis, one particularly, Joe Esposito, who said there's no way that could be Elvis. Mr. Joseph now has recanted his story, apparently, after that conversation, because why not? One of Elvis's guys said it couldn't be him, and so... All the stuff that he said about it, uh, that photo being Elvis Presley, is no longer true. The photo is a piece of the evidence that was used in Gail um, Giorgio Brewer's book, Is Elvis Alive? And that photo has shown up time and time and time again as that mounting evidence that Elvis has been spotted afterwards, uh, after his reported death. We're going to show you now an image of Elvis side by side with how he looked near his death and the photo that you see in the pool house. And so the question remains, what did he get a picture of that day? Is it possible that Elvis was sitting there watching people come by and pay tribute to him after he was supposedly left the building? Well, according to Mr. Joseph, the answer is yes, he got Elvis. And then the answer was no, he didn't. Why? Because Elvis's people said it couldn't be Elvis. So that was good enough for him. But after cashing in and selling the picture, then all of a sudden, he said it's not real. He didn't, of course, have to give back any of the money, but by the same token, it changes the story. So you decide for yourself who is in the picture. Did Mr. Joseph get a picture of Elvis, or did he not? And that takes you just another step further down the rabbit hole of conspiracy about whether or not Elvis is alive. See, the life and death of Elvis Presley, while it is interesting, uh, doesn't really impact any of us a great deal. But the ability to learn and discern truth and figure out what's real and not real, all oh, that is important in a day and age where there's a lot of information out there that's just not real. And so join us next time as we continue unfolding and unpacking the Elvis conspiracy. And until then, um, look for truth and don't be afraid to find it.